Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio, and at this point we have a mostly working quest system. We can accept quests, close our menu, head on back after completing them, and actually complete them to get rewards. However, we can't get out of this menu here, and we also need a mini menu to toggle between other menus, like say our stat system or skills panel. Right now they're just a mess. So in this video, we're going to add a way to close our quest log and a mini menu as well. Let's get started. So the first step is going to be to add a close button to our quest canvas. I'm just going to start by giving it some alpha so we can see what we're working with here. And then on the quest canvas, we're going to add a new button called close button. For this image, I'm going to use the button blue three slides from the Tiny Swords asset pack and in its rec transform, just set it to a width and height of 120. And then just going to drag it up into the top corner here as I want it to appear by my quest log title. To make it actually fully visible, let's go to Quest Canvas and just make it interactable so we can see what we're working with a little better. I'm then going to come down here and get rid of the Text Mesh Pro on our button and instead add a UI image. Call it subtraction sign, head to the image here, and I'm just going to type in regular and that'll get me a bunch of UI symbols from the Tiny Swords pack. There we go, that's actually looking pretty good already. At this point, we can just head to our button, scroll down to the bottom here, and add an on-click function. We're just going to drag our quest log UI in here, and then we're just going to click on the quest log UI, and we have a function that closes this already. It's our onDeclineClicked function. So we'll add that in there. I'll then just click on my quest canvas, and make sure that it's invisible to start again, and we can test this out. All right, now when we get in here, we can go ahead and open up the quest log and we can use that subtract button to get rid of it. That's working great, except that this decline button is still hanging around, which just seems a little odd. So let's pop into our script and fix that. Now in our quest log UI, we can just scroll on down to our on button clicked method, specifically the on accept. At the moment, we just decided not to do anything with the decline button as we needed it to close the menu. We don't anymore, so let's copy what we did for accept and just get our decline canvas group and set it to false. That's all we have to do for now. Now when we get in the game, we can accept the quest, use our close button to close it, and once we've completed it, we can come back, click complete, and you'll notice there's no longer a decline button there. All right, that's working really well. Now that we've got a close button working for our quest log, it's time to add that mini menu to toggle between all of our different menus. Now all of our other menus are currently hiding out in this prefab for our UI manager and we'll want to add our quest canvas to it at this time. That said, since it's a prefab, we can't just drag it in there, so instead I'm just going to hit Command C to copy it, open up our UI manager prefab, and then paste it in here. Next, I'm just going to fix a little silly thing I did earlier, and that is that we have a stats manager empty game object holding the stats manager and a separate object altogether for the canvas. I'm just going to copy that component, go to our stats canvas, and paste it as new. That'll paste in all the values we had in the previous one, which means we can now get rid of that extra game object. All right, now we've got a canvas with a manager for each of our different menus. Now let's create our menu bar. I'm just going to right click on the UI manager and add a UI image. We'll call this one bar and then I'll actually head up to the canvas and just rename the canvas as menu bar. Now, down on the bar itself, we need an image. I'm going to be using the banner horizontal. That's going to look atrocious at first, but before we do anything with it, let's just click on our quest canvas and make it visible so we can kind of see how this menu bar fits within the rest of our UI. So first, let's give some size to this thing. I'm just going to make this one about 1120 by 450. And you'll notice that seems a little large, but if we zoom in, you can see that its pixels are a different size from everything else. And that's because we've been slicing at a 0.5 pixels per unit for our other things. There we go, now it looks like it matches the other UI well. I realize this doesn't fit perfectly on the bottom here. You can set it up wherever you want on your screen, but I feel like this is the best place for now. I'll just close up those components we're not using, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a grid layout group. This is just going to be what organizes the different buttons we put on this mini menu. For now, we can just leave it empty. And before we add any of those buttons, I'm just going to go back to the menu bar itself and make sure it has a canvas group, which is what will enable us to turn the menu bar on and off, depending on whether or not we want it to show during gameplay. With that done, we can go down to our bar and add some buttons. My first button is going to be for my stats menu, so I'll call it stats button. I'm then just going to add the image of button blue three slides. And for now, we can't control its size from here as we need our grid layout group to do that. So if we go on back to the bar now, we can head into our grid layout group. And I'm going to make these about 240 by 120, which seems like a nice size to get some letters on there. We're then just going to add some padding and straighten how it's up in the top corner here. I'm also just going to add some negative spacing and negative 10 here, which at the moment you won't be able to see what that's doing. But let's duplicate these three buttons and it's just going to pull them a little closer together. I could put zero and it would just spread them out a little more and I just like the way it looks with that negative spacing there. 
All right, with that done, we're gonna get rid of those extra buttons as we don't need them just yet. Next, I'm just gonna add some words to this button. I'll type in stats here, then select bangers as our font. I'm gonna make this one a size 48. And then I don't like that it's sitting a little too low here, so I'm just gonna head to my rec transform and just move it up a tiny bit. With that done, we can duplicate it for each of the different menus we have, and then I'm just gonna rename them. So we have a skills button, and we'll change its TechSmash Pro to be skills, and then we'll also set up our quest button. Now that we've made these beautiful buttons, it would be nice if they did something. So I'm just gonna head to my assets folder into scripts, and I'm just gonna create a new one as we don't currently have anything for sort of meta UI. So I'm just gonna make this one a UI scripts folder. We'll head inside and I'll create a new C Sharp script called UI Manager. Let's begin by getting rid of our start and update methods. Now this is gonna be the script responsible for toggling each of these different menus. So let's begin by making some references to them. So we'll make a serialized private canvas group field. And the first will be our menu bar. Now we will need to keep track of whether or not the menu bar is currently open. So we'll make a private bool called is menu active. Next, we'll just need a reference to all three of our other menus, making serialized private canvas groups for the stats menu, skills menu, and quests menu. Now that we've got references to them, we need an actual method that's gonna be able to toggle them. So let's make a public void method called toggle menu. And here we'll take in the canvas group that is our current target. Now we don't wanna to have to write and rewrite a whole bunch of logic for turning off the alpha intractability and blocks raycast for each of these. So we're gonna make a helper method, similar to what we did with our quests earlier on. Here, this will be a private void set menu state. It's just gonna take in a canvas group called group and a bool for whether or not it's making that canvas group active. What it will then do is just get that group's alpha and set it equal to, and here it will ask a question. Well, is it active? If so, it'll set it to one, if not zero. It will then set the group's interactability to whatever the is active is. So if it's true, it'll turn it on. If not, it'll make it uninteractable. And we'll do the same for blocks raycast. Now up here in toggle menu, we can use that set menu state to get our stats menu and toggle it false. In fact, we're gonna turn all of the menus false when we first call this. By doing this, we'll make sure that whatever menu was currently open is now closed. And now we can open the target menu. So we'll get our set menu state, tell it to grab the target and turn it on. All right, that's all we need to do for now. Let's test this out. Back in Unity, while we're still in the prefab for our UI manager, let's click on that manager and add the UI manager script we just wrote. We now just need to fill this with our menu bar as well as our three menus. Next, I'm just gonna click on the quest canvas and set its alpha to zero as it should be off by default. Finally, we're ready to set up our buttons. So let's open up the bar, use shift click to get all three of our buttons at once. We'll add an on click function and now we can drag the UI manager in there. Now for each of these individually, we're just gonna add a function. We're gonna tell it to talk to the UI manager and tell it that we wanna to toggle a menu. Now here it just needs to know which one, so the stats button will toggle the stats canvas, and etc. Now we're ready to run a test, and when we get in the game, we can in fact click on each of these buttons. It will close the previous menu, open the correct one, then said we're having a little bit of a layering issue here. So if we click on our player UI and open the canvas, we can see its sorting order is zero, but so are our other canvases. So Unity doesn't necessarily know which one to render above the others. So let's head to our stats canvas and give it a two, so it's nice and high. We'll do the same thing for skills as well as for quests. Finally, we'll get our menu bar and just set it to order three so that it's above all of them. Now, when we do our toggling, you'll see that the mini bar stays on top no matter which menu is opening and things are actually working quite nicely. That said, we don't really want this mini menu to be here all the time. We wanna be able to open or close it only when the player actually wants to see the menu. Well, let's do that next. So I'm gonna close up the menu bar here is we actually want this button to be a standalone that will be on our screen at all times as it will be able to toggle everything. So let's go to our UI manager where we're gonna add one more canvas. We'll call this one menu toggle and then we're just gonna add a UI button onto it. And for the image, we're gonna use button blue three slides one more time. And I'll set this one to about 120 by 120. We can then drag it into place, but you'll notice it's not visible. So we need to go to its canvas and make sure that it's even higher yet than the rest of the toggle bar. I'll put it on layer four. At this point, we can just make some little adjustments. And instead of a text mesh pro here, I'm gonna add a image. We'll get a little fancy here, adding an image that's gonna show a plus sign when it's supposed to open the menu and a minus when it's supposed to close it. And then just gonna start off with regular eight, which is the plus button, as we'll get our code to update what it's supposed to look like at any given time anyways. So now let's head into our UI manager to make that happen. Now, first of all, we're gonna need a serialized private sprite reference to our open sprite. And we can copy paste that and make a reference to our close sprite as well. 
we then need a reference to the image that's actually going to display these sprites. So let's make a serialized private image reference. It won't like that, so let's head up top where we can get rid of these namespaces we're not using and add using unityengine.ui. We can then give this a name, menu toggle image, and there we go, no red squiggly. Now because this toggles a little differently than our other menus, we're going to need to add one final method. We're going to make this a public void called toggle main menu. This one does not need to take anything in as it will always be dealing with the menu bar canvas. So here, first of all, anytime this is called, we want to take our is menu active value and just flip it. At this point, we'll use our set menu state helper method to grab our menu bar and set it to whatever is menu active value is. We then just want to turn off all of the other slots because regardless of whether we're opening or closing it, we don't want them open when that happens. So let's turn them all off. Finally, let's grab our menu toggle image and make sure that its sprite is set to, and here we just need to ask the question, is the menu active? If it is, we want to close the sprite. We'll then make it an open sprite as our other option. All right, we've got a little hookup to do, so let's go ahead and click on our button here. We're just going to close up these other components, and in the button component, we're going to add an onClick function. We'll drag in the UI manager, and make sure that anytime we click it, we're calling the UI manager's toggle main menu method. I'll then go to my menu bar and just make sure that it is turned off by default so that all we see is the menu toggle itself. Finally, let's click on the UI manager itself and make sure to fill in these last spots here. So the image is going to be that plus slash minus image. And then we just want to grab our open sprite and make sure that it is set to the correct sprite and the same for our closed sprite. With that done, we have, well, sort of completed our quest system. We have a nice toggle here that opens our mini menu. We can toggle our different stats, skills, and quest menus and close them up whenever we like. We can also complete quests, get rewards. The quest system works. That said, we've still got some work to do. We want to add NPCs that can give quests, add some conditions on our quests, and if there's anything else you'd like to see before I wrap this up, make sure to let me know as we've just got a couple videos left. Hope to see you in those videos, but until that time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.